a heavy tire. This episode sponsored by, um, well, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Thank you, Radic. That will be delicious. Before we get into any of the fun stuff, uh, take a look at how the Valley Tech is constructed. Just so I have something to compare it to on the frame mount. Essentially, there are two bolts that run up through these bent metal brackets right here. Um, and they're just an L shape, like this. They tie around the frame with these two. And there are six, sorry, there are three. Three bolts that run through that that L bracket into the base of the of the, the rear bar itself. The wing over here isn't tied into the frame at all, which is probably why it shakes so uh, significantly. There are four bolts that run through the factory cross member um, and two that run up through through the bumper that's uh that's it that's how it bolts up to the to the frame is from where the the wing smashed into the bottom of the quarter panel there so that would be this part here but that is neither here nor there this is the weld I had to uh, redo I don't know how much I trust my welds but this thing uh, has seen better days. The hardware comes through the rear cross member, and these actually go up through that bracket, but they wouldn't stay there and anyway. And the only other attachment points are those two captive nuts inside the frame. So it reasons that if you put a very heavy 290 pound bumper on here, it's gonna wobble about this this bar, this cross member. That's a little mock-up of how the Valley Tech mounts. For the um, descent, I went with the 
high clearance rear cross member. So I'm actually going to be cutting this off. a couple of things while I was installing it that stood out to me um, as worthy of import. The inside of the hitch receiver is actually powder coated, which is awesome. The previous bumper I had didn't, didn't have that, so that's really cool. Um, obviously the new cross member is tucked farther into the back of the truck for high clearance. I'm pretty excited to avoid hitting uh, rocks on my departure, so we'll see. That's really exciting, but so far everything's going pretty well. It's mounting up. Um, I did obviously cut off the old cross member, and um, I'll have to go back and paint everything, but I'm going to wait and do that after. Uh, it's all buttoned up. I haven't really highlighted this yet, but the packing job from Descent uh, is pretty immaculate. The box it comes in uh, fits on a standard 48 by 40 pallet, uh, and you can have this delivered to a residential address for an additional $150, which of course is a payment made to FedEx, but I chose to pick it up at our local freight center, um, and uh, wow, everything's packaged extremely well. These are the wings, that's the table for the swing out, and that's part of the arm. If you put a wrench around the wire and loop it through, you can easily spread wire into conduit over an extended line. I have to route this through the um, little splash shield that goes onto the side of the lower quarter panel. So I'm drilling, drilling it out with a half inch um, diameter step bit. There we 
there you go. And now I'll just pull that through so that it's ready to go. lights go in like this with the yellow indicator towards the edge of the vehicle there's a like a lip on these brackets to go up Phillips head screw bolt whatever eight millimeter lock nut on the back like that. Insert this and quarter 20 with a four millimeter hex head. I'm installing a swing arm on the driver's side. 13 millimeter nut, 10 millimeter bolt. I had to drill out the holes in this bracket because the quarter tony bolts wouldn't fit. I found out that uh, you should not install the trailer harness connector into the driver's side wing before you install it. It's easier to get it on and then put that in there. Um, I kept hitting the, the cross member with the end of this um, connector, so it's easier just to get it all on after the wing is in place. Here's a quick look at the wing stiffener. This is on the passenger side. So there's a through bolt you have to drill a hole for. Um, and I used the step bit for that. Um, and it's located directly underneath the bolt, the farthest bolt back uh, for the factory tire carrier mount, that guy. Uh, so that's what that's for. When the wing stiffener is added, um, you'll tighten this bolt until it starts to pull the frame in and that's good enough. Um, and the bolt on the other side over here that bolt gets tightened to 95 foot pounds or at least that's what I tightened it to here's your cross member for the high clearance rear bumper these are the M8s they get torqued to 30 or 30 something foot pounds. I've got one of the wings on on the side over there. It's going okay. There's the wire harness for the, the lights. And yeah, it's a mess. A couple of things to point out when you're putting the wing on, it's easiest if you push it forward. So you can kind of slide it in from the side, but then push forward. Um, there's a a lip underneath that'll catch if you try to push it in through the side. So there's the, the look with both of them. Um, I haven't put any of the hardware in for this side and it's also a good idea to pre-run your wires as you're getting it set up um, so you don't accidentally slice any of them or uh, so they don't get lost in the abyss up there. These are the M8s. They go in the wing stiffeners and they need a dab of anti-seize on them before they can go in. I forgot to put in these shims 
There's one for either side. You can slide it in just by removing these two bolts. So this gap here is dictated by the shims and it looks to me like it's getting thinner as it goes toward the front of the, the uh, truck. So I might put a second shim on the passenger side here um, just to level that back out. Alright, so that's a lot better. That's with two shims. Another customizable item is how far in and out the bumper sits. I'm pulling it all the way out because I come into contact with a lot of rocks from the side. So I want as much protection as I can get for my quarter panel. Uh, so that's fully in and fully out. I'm going to tighten it up fully out. In comparison, this is what the Slee off-road bumper looks like on the quarter panels. And actually, he would hit his tire long before he would come into contact with anything here. But these have built-in angle, um, almost sliders right there. Pretty cool. Here's a look at the progress on the descent. Um, this is the high clearance uh, replacement co cross member. So I did have to cut off my cross member. It's lying over there. Um, some people don't want to do that and that's completely fine. I decided to go for it. If I remember correctly, Descent claims that their high clearance rear bumper has more clearance than the SLEE. Uh, so I'm curious to see those in the flesh. It's pretty convenient I have Zach's truck right now. I wound up going with two shims for this side as well. And the um, gap seems to close up towards the front. So looks like my truck is a two shim truck. Over here, I had to drill and tap a hole. Um, oh, sorry for the flicker. The shutter speed is at the same speed of this flashlight. Anyway, uh, I had to drill and tap a hole into my frame, which is an M8125, since I have a bunch of those lying around, and that was to push this nut, uh, the captive nut in the frame, that way, because it was acting up on me. Um, and I think you can see it, but the bolt that's farther farther down the frame, right here, um, is actually at an angle. It's not cross-threaded. The, the way that the bracket mounts inside of the frame, it's like an angle down, and it's kind of bent up. So on the other side, when I tightened those bolts, um, it fit, like it pulls the nut down and creates a sandwich on the frame. So it's good to go, um, but it looks real funky. Here's an interesting little tidbit I just learned. Um, the trailer harness will not fit in position unless you carve out a little section of plastic about that big. I just used the Dremel tool to cut that out. Um, you can fit this, the actual connector, you can fit that in place, but then when you try to plug in the, um, the female end in through the back, it won't fit because it comes into contact with the high clearance um, cross member. So I had to cut it, cut it out so that I could get the holes to fit and line up. Um, which I thought was fairly interesting. 
might have been just a small oversight. Um, I don't know if anybody else has actually bought the high clearance rear hitch and installed the trailer harness before, so that could be the issue here. Oh boy. Well, it's been like maybe a month since I shot the rest of this video. Um, but I wanted to finish it because it's pretty important, you know, part of the story. Um, where did I leave off? I had just installed the swing arm base. Um, the rest of it, there's a nice PDF on Descent's website to install um, their their table swing arm for the tire carrier and all of that junk. Um, uh, but I thought that I would just update a little bit about my experience with the bumper since it's been like two months, I guess. Um, right now the truck is on jack stands. I'm installing a factory locked axle in it but uh, hopefully that'll be ready for Moab. On the Ozarks trip, I noticed at some point that the, the main bolt for the swing arm had come loose. I think I just didn't tighten it enough, uh, but that's something to pay attention to because, you know, the whole arm was moving around, uh, which would not be necessarily a good thing. Um, uh, I modified the the table a bit. This way the tailgate can open and close with the table up. Uh, if you don't cut the table then you can't do that. I got super sick of having to take the table, like, you know, I would set stuff up there, a camp stove or a laptop or whatever, and then I'd have to pull it all away and it, it was just an in inconvenience, so I modified the table. Um, it makes sense to me why Ben doesn't go through the trouble to design it to work with every single tailgate, and that's because he makes these swing outs for all sorts of, like you could buy one for an 80 series and fit it up to a 100 series, but the tailgates are different, so it, you know, it, it's impossible to make it universal. Uh, but anyway, that was just one thing I noticed. Other than that, um, those are really the only two points of major feedback I have so far. Um, I do think... Oh, that's pretty tall. Um, I do think it's pretty significant that an aluminum tire carrier supports a 117 pound spare tire better than a steel one. Um, that's certainly something to be considered. I'll set you guys down here for a moment just so you can sort of see the deflection. It's definitely moving around a bit, but that's mostly because of the latch mechanism. There's a little bit of play, and there's a preload set by the inside bump stop back here. Um, I used the big bump stop on the inside and the small one on the outside, um, and that's how I was able to set those up. I don't really know what the torque specs are for any of this. I just tightened it up until it felt like it wasn't going to go anywhere. So that's sort of my plan. But 
in the few weeks that I've had this thing mounted, I have beat the crap out of it already. And uh, I've been fairly impressed. I mean, look at all that. It hasn't moved an inch. So I'm, uh, I'm very impressed. This is the big exciting one. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Ooh man. The descent sticks out about eight inches with the hitch. Okay, yeah, so the slee uh, rear hitch sticks out nine and a quarter inches from the bottom of the tailgate here. All right, I don't know how accurate this is. Um, I'm measuring from the pumpkin. My truck is uh, currently on jack stands, so the geometry is going to be a little bit off, but the slee sticks out approximately 45 inches from the pumpkin on the diff. I put the I put the tape measure like right on the e-brake cable. Oh wow. Yep. So uh looks like it's 44 and a half ish. <laughs> so it's barely a little bit less. I haven't had a chance to test the wings out yet. Like, I haven't gotten a chance to smack them into a rock. So I can't really, you know, and there's also a lot more heavy off-roading I have to do with this thing. But I can't really give my definitive uh, verdict on it, apart from it has held together and I really like its construction. It's convenient to use. Oh, that's something. The operation of the rear swing arm you can do that one-handed that's amazing i've like ah it's so convenient and to close it you literally just push it like that's it I, it's so much nicer than my previous setup it's a small thing but it really does help like when i'm trying to access the back and i just need one tool i can you know do it with one hand so huge huge improvement there um, but yeah I'm eager to test it out in Moab um, that's coming up in April so be sure to tune in and stick around for that um, but between now and then I'm going to Windrock for a camping event with Big Slack so that'll be fun um, and in the meantime, I'm going to see if I can get this rear locker to work. So more details about that coming out pretty soon. But I, uh, I will see you guys in the next one. And um, remember to drink up your... Here, I'll actually try to pronounce this. I think it's Chekvar. But <laughs> it, this isn't actually a sponsorship. Radic gave me this beer, and it is quite possibly the best I have ever tried. It's amazing. So, thank you, Radic, wherever you are. I'll see you guys later. We'll get your Instagram after. Hey, thanks.